There was once, long, long ago, a mighty city that lay across the Aegean Sea to the east of Greece. A city of high towers and strong walls. A city of proud people ruled by a benevolent king named Priam. A city known as Troy. Our story begins at the wedding of King Peleus of Thessaly and the beautiful sea nymph, Thetis. Every god and nymph was sent an invitation to this feast, every god except one, Eris, the goddess of discord. This exclusion enraged Eris, and in her anger she decided upon a plan that would cause chaos for all those present. Even though I wasn't invited, I have a gift. Ferris hand. Three goddesses. Hera, the queen of the gods, Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and Aphrodite, the goddess of love, argued amongst themselves as to who deserved the apple. Zeus, who would usually settle such disputes swiftly and decisively, knew well that to give the prize to one of the goddesses would offend the other two. Thus, he decided that someone else should judge. Go to Mount Ida. What? what? Go to Mount Ida. What? There, the handsomest mortal of them all, Paris, son of Priam, shall decide who gets the apple. Me. Me. I got it already. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm the so Paris. I will give you the most beautiful woman in the world to be your wife. Paris, if you choose me, I'll make you the most powerful king in the world. Athena, uh, yours was just stupid. I don't want you here anymore. <laughs> Aphrodite, I'll give you the golden apple. Sorry. Paris's choice greatly offended the other goddesses, and they secretly vowed to punish the youth for his rash judgment. So you see, Father, Aphrodite promised me the most beautiful woman in the world. Are oh, you sure it's not a dream? Oh, it is no dream. Aphrodite promised me I would get the most beautiful woman in the world, and Helen certainly is. I don't understand. This woman you speak of, Helen, she already married Menelaus. There's no way you can get her. her. She said nothing would get my way. I really hope you can do what you're doing, son. Menelaus is the brother of Agamemnon. Go if you must, but the price will be in your head. And so Hector and Paris left for Greece. Unbeknownst to the fact that all the chieftains of Greece were bound by an oath to come to the aid of Menelaus if ever Helen were to be taken away. Hector and Paris were greeted royally by Menelaus, who was unsuspecting of Paris' plot to steal Helen. He provided a feast for them, an entertainment, but Paris saw nothing but the eyes of Helen. That evening, Paris and Hector left, taking with them Helen, who had fallen under the spell of Aphrodite. Fifteen minutes. Intermission. <laughs> Helen! 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 My lord, she is gone. The two Trojans took her. They did what? Send out the couriers to the chieftains of Greece. Remind them of their oath and bring them here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thus, couriers were sent to every chieftain of Greece. And every one of them Nothing. came to Menelaus. Kelly. All except for one. Ulysses, the wisest of the Greeks, Achilles. was sent to persuade Achilles to join the invasion force. Why won't you fight for us? This is my mother. She doesn't want me to fight for her. She heard when I was young that if I ever went to war, I would achieve great glory, but suffer death. Yes. Well, then come play for us. And so, the yes. Greeks set sail for Troy, bringing all manners of weapons and instruments of siege. Thus began the war. The armies of Greece sieged Troy. Again and again, the Greek forces charged across the plain and launched repeated attacks against the city's defenses. Each assault was repelled by deadly volleys of spears and arrows, and the fighting raged in the fields in front of the city's walls. For nine years the battles continued, but the Greeks were no closer to defeating the Trojans. To make matters worse for the Greeks, Achilles was offended by the other chieftains, and he refused to fight. You will all regret this. I quit. No! Oh, you must come, come, come back! back. <laughs> you must not leave! Back. Please! Please! Back. Back. Oh. 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 Oh.
The Greeks, fighting without Achilles, were driven back by the Trojans. Victory and bringing Helen back to Greece seemed impossible to attain. Achilles saw that his countrymen were being slaughtered, so he decided to make amends with the other Greek leaders and to fight once again. My son, do not stay in the battlefield and fight with Achilles. I will not feel like a coward before Achilles. He's only a man. Son, come back inside the walls. I fought a thousand concubines when I come out, not lead it fail. I challenge you, Hector, a fight between the two heroes of Greece and Troy. Ah! Achilles eventually returned Hector's body to Troy and his father Priam. And there was a 12-day truce so that the Trojans could properly bury their best warrior. Paris was the best archer in Troy, and he aimed a poisoned arrow at Achilles' only weak spot, his heel. Achilles' death effectively killed the spirit of the Greeks, who turned and fled. Now without their leader, the desperate Greeks conceived a plan to get inside the walls of Troy, wreak their vengeance on Priam and Paris, and put an end to the war. We surrender. Please accept our gift. If you accept your gift, just leave it in the field. The Greeks appeared to leave, and Paris cautiously brought the trophy of Troy's victory into the city, for the Trojans thought that the Greeks had given up. That night, Greek soldiers emerged from a hidden compartment inside the force. All the Trojans were sleeping after a long night of celebration and victory, and they were unprepared for what happened next. The Greeks took the Trojans completely by surprise, and conquered the city. Thus, they were the victors of the Trojan War. <laughs>